Okay, I, I put a tweet out a couple of days ago. This was during the Islanders game, and I said that March was just a nightmarish month for the Flyers. Now the month of April is going to be the month where they go to an outrageous amount of overtimes. And what do you know, the first two games of April, the Flyers went to overtime both times. They lost in the shootout to the Islanders a couple of days ago. Now they win this game against the Boston Bruins by a score of 3-2-2. Two, two. And not the ideal way you want to win this game, but <laughs> I guess you could say a win is a win, but still, this is not the ideal way you want to win. You're neck and neck with Boston with the fourth place spot in the East Division. You don't want to give away points. Basically, instead of gaining two points against them, you gain one point, And Boston still has those games in hand. So you can't keep going to overtime with this team. But hey, we got our first win against Boston this year. whoop de doo <laughs> And I wouldn't say... No, the Flyers definitely didn't play a bad game. It honestly could have been... Could have been a better game for them. I wouldn't say it was a terrible game, but I would say they played a decent enough game and they bat you they showed their energy throughout, but there were still a lot of moments where same mistakes came back to haunt them. But Brian Elliott for the Flyers was strong in net tonight. But the power play, even though they got the first two power plays for the Flyers, definitely weren't major help. But the the Flyers actually scored on a power play today. And yeah. And also that overtime. <laughs> Just Brad Marchand getting pissed off, and then you get Patrice Bergeron just falling flat on his ass, allowing Sandheim to get that breakaway. <laughs> I mean, like, I guess you just couldn't put together a perfect game or something like that. And also to the point, the refs were terrible in this game as well for both sides. Like, especially in that stretch of the third period where there were just, like, obvious calls that the refs just didn't call for both sides. Like, guys getting knocked down at the boards on each side of the ice. A guy literally closing his hand on the puck and then throwing it onto the ice, not getting called for a delay of the game. And the refs weren't that good in this game for both sides and both squads. So, hey, Flyers get the win. I guess this is something to build off of. The past two games they played actually fairly decently, and they managed to get points out of them. So they got three points in their last two games. Hopefully this is something they build off of, but like I said, I'm not keeping my hopes high for this team. This team still has way too many issues that they need to address. And even though management did say this stretch of games is going to determine what they do with the trade deadline, whether they're buyers or sellers, or maybe they're a mix of both. I, I still am assuming they're going to be a mix of both buyers and sellers. I just don't see them just being one or the other. But just going over this game, the Flyers actually got the first goal of the game, and the start of the game was a little bit back and forth. It's a lot of icings in this game, too. I think there were 10-plus icings in this game. I was like, why? <laughs> and especially for the Flyers' side as well. The Flyers iced the puck so many times. It was ridiculous at that point that they iced the puck so many times. It was, you know, I just don't, don't understand it. Don't understand it at all. But the line of Travis Konechny, Jake Voracek, and Claude Giroux they were, they had a little bit of momentum in this game. They were controlling in the offensive zone, and they did it in this chance right here. The Flyers, Boston was trying to clear the zone. Provorov keeps it in. Flyers keep battling, and then there's a loose puck in front of the net, and Travis Kennedy manages to bury and it into the open net past, <laughs> past the third-string goaltender for the Boston Bruins. And that's one thing, too, for Boston as well. They don't have Halak, and they don't have Rask, so they're going to their third-string guy in Vladar, and and you know the Flyers history with a uh, backup and third string goaltenders that they make them look fantastic and Vladar did have a good game for Boston as well especially in the second period where he robbed the Flyers a couple of times on the power play but Konechny he gets his first goal in so many games so hopefully that's something he got the monkey off of his back and hopefully this can be a good little stretch for him because he did ha he did make his presence felt in this game I did sense a really good game out of Travis Konechny from this one but Typical Flyers, they don't know what momentum is after they score a goal, and they break down the next, very next shift and allow Boston to control in the zone so many times. You got Charlie McAvoy hitting a post, a couple of other Boston players hitting the post. You got David Pasternak doing his thing, but Brian Elliott standing tall and net, t keeping the puck out, helping the Flyers out a little bit. But one too many mistakes goes in your own zone, and Boston scores late in the period as Kuhlman. Gets one past Brian Elliott, and he makes it a 1-1 game. 
Then the Flyers, they take a penalty going into the intermission. Boston gets the power play to start off the period. And then bing, bang, boom, it's Patrice Bergeron in the slot, making it 2-1 Boston. Just, you can't take that penalty at the end of the period. Even though they're in, on the uh, Kuhlman goal, there definitely was a non-call on that play because Jake Voracek was tripped at the boards, which directly resulted into Kuhlman getting that set-up pass for the goal. So yeah, the ref kind of missed one there. Then they called one on the Flyers at the end of the period. So Boston's up 2-1 to start off the second. Then the Flyers... They take a couple of penalties. Boston takes a couple of penalties. Actually, on one of the penalty kills, when the Flyers killed it off, you got Justin Braun sprinting out of the box, getting a breakaway of his own. Almost scored, actually. But then also on one of the Flyers' power plays, you get Travis Konechny and Claude Drew both getting robbed by Vladar, making these outstanding saves. Just, man. It's just, uh, of course, typical Flyers. They can't... <laughs> they're going to make a uh, third-string goaltender look like uh, Dominic Hasek. But... <laughs> But like I said, Vladar for Boston actually, in the few games that he's played, and actually has been pretty good. So, but still, I like using that joke that the Flyers just can't score against third string and AHL caliber goaltenders. I just find that hilarious to think about. So, intermission, still 2-1 Boston going into the third. Flyers, they get a power play early on in the third period. And before I actually get into this, players that did not ha not have a good game, guys like Kevin Hayes, Ivan Provorov, like, there was, like, one shift, I think it was on the Flyers' power play, where Provorov just couldn't get the puck out of the zone, turned it over immediately, Kevin Hayes turning the puck over immediately, Boston getting a chance shorthanded. They ideally just didn't have a good game. So, go to the third period, on the power play, second unit comes out, and at first you're thinking, oh, this is just a typical Flyers' power play at this point, they're not going to set it up, they're taking way too long, they're not going to score, but there you go, Sean Couture from the left side, just throwing the biscuit onto the net, and it goes in, assisted from Provorov and Hayes, and he ties the game at two. Then you go both teams getting their chances in the third period, goaltenders making their saves, and the only power play of that period went to the Flyers, and... Yeah, both teams definitely had their chances, especially Boston as well. Still hitting a couple of those posts, and Brian Elliott coming up big. Flyers getting their chances as well. They can't finish, so we go to overtime. <laughs> so we, we go to overtime, and kind of a back-and-forth overtime, I would say. I would say Boston really didn't get many dangerous chances. I think the Flyers got majority of them. Flyers got a couple of rushes going down to the Boston zone. Boston got their chances, but they were more, I guess, puck possessive than trying to take their chances at the goal. At the goal, So Boston, they're setting up. This is like halfway into the overtime. Boston setting up in the offensive zone. You get Travis Sanheim out there. Bergeron, for some reason, wants to just fire it from the point. Gets blocked by Sanheim. And Sanheim pounces right on that puck. He goes up the ice. Bergeron falls flat on his ass. And then Sanheim gets the breakaway. Goes bar down past, <laughs> past the goaltender. And it's a 3-2 Flyers victory. And actually, during that play, as it was progressing, you get Nolan Patrick and Brad Marchand going at it behind the play. And then after the goal was scored, you saw Brad Marchand chirping at the Flyers bench. And the Boston Bruins definitely weren't happy because I guess Marchand wanted a penalty on Patrick during that play. But I guess throughout the entire game, there were a lot of plays not getting called. So I guess what do you expect at that point, Marchand? So not going to be uh, too involved in that. But hey, Flyers got their point. And yeah, definitely. It's still not the ideal way you want to win this game. Just not because you give Boston another point and you only technically gain a point in this game. Even though it's a win, you only gain a point because you gave Boston the extra one in the overtime. So yeah, I guess you get right back at it tomorrow. Philadelphia, Boston Bruins, well, back at the Wells Fargo Center. And most likely, Carter Hart, I would assume, is going to be in goal tomorrow. I think from, from lineup-wise tonight, it was Oscar Lindblom that was scratched tonight. Raffle came back in. So I wonder if Elaine Vigneault elects to go with the same lineup for tomorrow night. We'll just have to wait and see for that. And like I said, I expect Carter Hart to be the starter. If you look at some stats in today's game, the Flyers outshot Boston 32-29. to Flyers, it's kind of becoming a pattern the past couple of days. They're getting a little bit dominated in the face-off circle. Power plays, well, special teams for both teams. Kind of pretty even. Flyers 1 for 3 on the power play. Boston 1 for 2. 
Boston hits kind of pretty even. Boston 30, Flyers 26. Both teams blocked a lot of shots. Boston 12, Flyers 10. And both teams gave the puck away a lot. 8 for Boston, 7 for the Flyers. And if we look at the Eastern Division standings after this game, so right now the Flyers, if they were to win regulation today, they would have been two points behind the Boston Bruins, but... Uh, now they're three points behind Boston because they give the the other loser point to the Bruins. So Boston, they still have two games in hand with 44 points. The Flyers have 41 points still in fifth place. So with the Flyers are going to go on a stretch of winning, you got to do it in regulation. You cannot go to overtime against this Boston team. But like I said, not going to keep my hopes high. Just going to take it game by game and just see how it goes. I still, Like I said, I still think this team has way too many issues for them to go into the playoffs with and just see what happens during this week and we'll see how it transpires at the trade deadline what Chuck Fletcher actually does so what are your thoughts on this game everyone what are your thoughts on the Flyers win the way they played versus Boston all that good stuff so don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section below don't forget to drop a like on this video don't forget to check out the painted lines which I am a part of their links will be in the description below don't forget to check out the links to the Flyer Up Podcast merchandise website and also the link for Flyers Nitty Gritty. They will be in the description below as well. And always don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to the channel, everyone. And I will see you next time.